the following video contains a bloody lot of swearing. You might swear too if you got ripped off and stuffed around, but at the end of the day, it appears as though we achieved the intended task. Alrighty, people. Well, I went in there to get my hot water system pump. Ho, ho, ho. I tell you what, that guy, fuck me, it would be the last time I'll be going to that place. I mean, honestly. He went and looked up a particular one. Oh, she'll be 250 bucks. You know, that's GST included. She comes to 250 bucks. And, uh, yeah, and handles 71 degrees Celsius water. So I'll go in there, and he said, I'll have one ordered in. Go in there. What do you know? Oh, I rang up, I asked about the water temperature and all that. Yeah, righty -o. They don't make them anymore. Holy smoke. <laughs> Why didn't you know this if you're the flaming dealer for them, that they don't make them anymore? Oh, not to worry, mate. I managed to get you another one of a different brand that's pretty much the same thing, and I managed to get the manufacturer to lower the price to match the price I gave you as a quote for the other one. Now, it was 250 bucks. I know 100% it was 250 bucks. It was 230 bucks for 4GST or something like that. So 255, somewhere around that it was going to be. And um, so anyway, he gets me this one here. Now, I don't know if you can see that because there's too much glare on the screen. I wanted 8 litres a minute. Well, here we are, 15.5 litres a minute at 13 amps draw as opposed to 10 amps draw and 8 litres a minute. So he's got me, there's your different models, he got me this one here, um, which is the junior puppy. It says 18 here, and it actually says 15 at a certain height for that one. Anyway, it turns out that there is one called the Mini Puppy, 7 litres a minute, close enough. But no, don't get me the one that's 7, 8 litres a minute. Get me the one that's double that. So now, I'm going to either overheat the engine trying to get it through, but what I'm going to have to do now is put a T-piece on there and a tap that feeds back into the hot water system tank. And then I'm going to have to wrap silver paper around that pipe that feeds back into the wood hot water system tank so that I can only get half of the literage a minute without overheating the engine by trying to force, you know, 15.5 litres a minute through a shower head that will only let through 8 litres a minute and then overheat the friggin' engine. As opposed to by the smaller one which did do the right amount. Then it come to the price. I made sure that, you know, I got it from the manufacturer at the same price I gave you as a quote for the other one. Well, it come to $324. So the pricks ripped me off about another $70, $74. And when it's come to it, I said, oh, you said it was 250 you know, last week. Oh, no, there's no way you have an impeller pump for 250 bucks. Do you want me to check the price? And I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. I thought, I'm not going to sit here arguing with this dumb fucker. I mean, here he was telling me, you know, that the other one's good because it's got uh, a cooling fan and vents to cool the engine. Well, where the fuck is the cooling fan on this thing? There's nothing. She's sealed. So, you know, does it really matter that much because this model's sealed? So, you know, God blimey, I'll tell you what, though. Oh, you want me to check the price, and why bother? You know, you're just going to argue like shit and say, oh, no, I must have got that wrong last week, and I'm going to end up paying what you bloody quoted me now anyway, you know, on something that's double the flow that I've now got to put a T-piece on and probably have the water cool as it goes back down the line if I don't wrap the whole lot in bloody silver paper. So I'm sick of it. And you know, But it's just the way it is um, in Australia. When you go to buy stuff... I don't know how many shops I've been into where you got salespeople who know less about the damn product than you do, and at the time, I've been out of a job, 
and you've got this dude who doesn't know a fucking thing about the product he's selling, and I feel like saying to him, I know more than you do. How the fuck come you're in a sales job and I'm not? Honestly, you know, how the hell are you in your job if you can't tell me about the shit you're supposed to be selling? You know, but anyway... Never mind the fact we've jumped from 10 amps to 13 amps. Never mind the fact I've got to put a T-piece and feed it all back. I don't think I'm going to get the wattage uh, to charge the battery up with 20 watts. So in all this, you know, I could have got one that took a reasonable amperage. I could have got one that had not double what I needed. But in all this, I've decided to buy a 40-watt solar panel uh, to try to boost the intake because, quite honestly, like... It's 20 watts when the sun's out and nice and beautiful. You don't get that on dark days. You'll be getting like two watts. So, you know, if I get even at this one and on dark days I'm getting, you know, maybe a total of like about six to eight watts, that'll be good enough. Um, but, yeah, I bought this one as well. Um, i got fuses and uh, switches and crap for this. Um, and yeah, all the fittings and stuff, and hopefully we'll be uh, ready to set it up. But I tell you what, like, I'm just sick to death of dealing with that many times I've had one price quoted, and you go in there, and it turns out they get you a different one, and almost every time the price you quoted last week will be nothing like what it is. So you say, oh, I've got enough money to pay for it. You drive all the way in there, and find out that, nah, you're 50 bucks short because these dickheads quote you a second price. And You know, the customer is basically who gives a shit in this country, and it's not like the States. Not at all. Not from some things Troy told me. You know, it's, just, you know, it's always a, a bun fight to get any money back or anything like that, even if they sell you stuff that's dud. Just gives me the shits. But anyway... That's the way it is here in Australia. Um, and, you know, for shops that are good, well, you know, it opens it up a bit more for uh, people who, you know, can actually stick to their bloody word and stick to their quotes and get you something that's the right flow, not double the flow. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. There goes one pump. Chinese piece of crap. I'm going to put lead for the other one in. I was sort of wondering a bit, I used to have this white stuff coming up and uh, sort of looks a little bit like flux, like where the MIG welder might have been. Um, but it's right inside and I mean right inside in a big big way to the point it actually looks deliberately lined. And it may be something to do with the fact it's a propane tank and the way it was uh, manufactured. It's a little bit of rust coming up there. And there. Um, I think this was an old pipe that had been used for something else or was sitting around outside for quite a while. And most of the rest of them are new pipes. Uh, but the sacrificial anode, if I can get in there. Yeah, which is your one right there. That's taken the brunt of it, and that's actually eaten quite away, a bit of it away. Uh, and the water level's gone down quite a bit. As you can see it down there. But that's sort of, um, yeah, just evaporated out during the summer. So we'll have to get some buckets and top it all up and move a few other bits of flipping rubbish out. And... Uh, yeah. Alrighty. Well, it seems the flux issue in that hot water system is pretty blooming severe. <laughs> and, uh, well, the sacrificial anode has been saving the day thus far. Um, but, well, it's something you know about car propane tanks now. They're full of bloody flux, and as soon as you put water in, all this stuff comes out. And I don't know if it's in the pores of the steel or what, but. There's a lot of it that's come out. I may have to replace the sacrificial anode. My father suggested that these things don't rust too bad when you keep watering them over the summer. So I kept watering it the whole summer. Meanwhile, all the flux is out there and it's, you know, trying to eat away at the tank, but instead it's eating away the sacrificial anode in the process. $80 blasted sacrificial anode. Um, 
So I probably should have emptied it for the summer, but generally, you know, tanks rust when they're empty, but I never expected the amount of flux and muck to come out. I knew there was a bit of stuff initially when I had it last year, but, but now it's really showing up. But anyway, got this thing. Stainless steel tank. I never really worked out how this worked. I didn't know if it was some sort of a cyclonic plumbing cleaner to get dirt out of water or what it was. Um, but I got the torch down there and worked it all out. Now this pipe here, it's four inches long and then you've got another foot and two inches long that it comes up to about here or something. And that pipe there stops inside here. Then this just continues on here. That isn't, that there doesn't connect back through that pipe. That is just all one piece. And so you've got like a little, yeah, piece where it sits up here. This one just juts straight into the side. And that's mild steel, which would be very nice to weld onto. Now, if I set this up correctly, um, I can have incoming water coming through here block that off and have a little bit of a hose or something um, down this to suck water in. What I could actually do is cover this off and have your pipe outlet to go to your shower, hook this one directly to the um, line coming from the overhead tank and then block this off. Now fortunately when I bought this MIG welder I didn't use it quite as much as I expected but it does have the ability to weld aluminium, but you've got to get a gas bottle, and they've got a few of the fittings and gas lines and that. Uh, you've got to get an argon gas bottle. But what it does have is stainless steel, and all I've basically got to do is take the wire out of the uh, welder, the mild steel wire, and just put in stainless steel wire reel and feed it through the uh, line, and then off I go, and I can weld stainless or at least the welder can weld stainless, and I'll see how good I am at welding stainless. Um, but anyway, this is a possibility of using this, because it's stainless, it's likely to be pretty flaming good. It may need a little bit of dirt washed out with a pressure washer inside there, but I can do that at some point. Uh, but this, what I'm trying to say, may be a second option, and... If I was to sort of set up a fire around this, um, you know, you might be all right. What you can actually do is you can put a jacket, uh, which is sort of like a bit of, like basically have a chimney, so to speak, um, and have your thick sheet metal or something about there, just about, you know, somewhere between a quarter inch and, and uh, probably more like half inch or three eighths or something away from this. And while it won't heat up through the middle, it heats up the base and all the sides. And then your smoke exits somewhere out here. Um, because your smoke is basically sandwiched in between this and where you've got your bit of chimney, so to speak, over the top of that. And that would work out quite all right. Um, not really as efficient, but then again, you're not going to have flux issues with stainless steel, I don't think, because once again, this is second-hand metal, and I don't know what it's exactly been used for either. Um, but yeah, that may be an option for the future. Turns out the pump is bronze with a rubber impeller. I thought it was brass with a rubberized impeller. Um, but yeah, that's just a bit of food for thought if the other one doesn't make it and I don't think the other one will make it in the long term because of this uh, flux issue and uh, yeah, bit of a bummer but I mean this is the sort of crap you, you go through when you use second hand steel and you're not 100% sure of the previous uses or exactly what's happened uh, previously with uh, said car propane tank alrighty using the big high intensity discharge torch so we see what we're doing here with this camera um, yeah that's the pump got all my uh, fittings and crap on the side there uh, there's my three point bleed off you see that white thing there, it's a tap uh, there's the one that goes on the right there up to your shower 
Uh, I try to use vinyl between the pump and the tap and the bloody stuff just kinked. It's too weak. So and I've been playing around making up like bits of wire the shape of springs to try and straighten out um, and even curve pieces of the incoming garden hose pipe uh, so I can curve over the top of the tank and then it wanted to curl up at the end so I had to put a bit on that to stop it from curling up so it actually got down um, you know, straight in the tank um, not just curl on the side and then go hard up against one of the blooming chimney pipes or whatever you want to call it, the heating tubes and then and just try and suck all the crap off that as opposed to draw in hot water um, but yeah I got a glorious <laughs> piece of Chinese shit 20 amp switch now when I'm trying to sit my foot on you know that bit of 4B2 there and then sort of on this piece here and then you know hold the solder wire uh, one other bit of wire I've got a solder a soldering iron on the wrong way and uh, everything just turned to shit and ended up getting too hot and melting the switch uh, it was a bloody cheap piece of five bucks shit anyway uh, so you can't expect much but I've got a cable this is old um, what I was really trying to do is see that black cable there that's actually solar panel cable and you know I needed some decent amperage I didn't think I'd be able to do it I didn't buy eyelets but you can see you can probably see there I've soldered direct onto the battery clamps uh, onto the oh, not battery clamps you know what I mean battery terminals um, so yeah that sort of worked out quite alright um, and the positive ones just sort of a little one going behind a bit of 4B2 there um, and I've just sort of got a bit of tape over the end of that and I just touched it to the end of the fuse one there tried to get the first fuse in and bloody half fell out and spun in my hand so then I pushed it in and then of course touched the wires together boom fuse blows straight away the 20 year old blooming fuse is out of an old skyline so you can't expect much um, and then put a second fuse in bingo worked perfect and uh, still got to go and get that switch so that I don't have to touch wires together you know I can just turn on and off a little switch that's mounted either up here or behind the pump or something like that and um, yeah then actually you know just turn on and off like a normal person but by hell it's <laughs> a flaming noisy pump and it's 13 amps so I've still got to muck around and put the um, other solar panel up there I've actually got a I want to do what they call short circuit test which is where you check that you're getting the amps that it's rated at on the solar panel which I might do in a while because the sun's sort of half out and uh, later on I'll have to solder it in but see I've got the ball valve tap there sort of turned half on so and that line there you can see the clear vinyl one on the right that's your outline which sort of well ends up basically right beside the inline which is your green garden hose coming in there yeah oh that's uh you're definitely squirting water. You can see it all down the sides of the thing. Um, yeah, I'll just use the crapo. It's awfully crappy. It's the same blooming one I had last year. I've taken the, the thing out at the moment. Uh, all the centre you can actually take out as individual pieces. That's it there. Ah, bloody useless camera. Anyway, so, there you go little segments and the trouble is between all the little segments and grooves and that gets full of um, dust and crap so <laughs> the unfortunate part is you're going and cleaning this out every few nights but all the same if I only use it half the nights anyway it won't be a, a blooming, uh, problem but there we go anyway so glad to say it's actually playing ball and I've got it all sorted and um, all I need to do is I'll come short of I had to <laughs> go hunting for all the hose clamps because as you can see there's a, a number of hose clamps on the right there to put it lightly and I don't have one on the return so I'm going to have to feed one back through on the return when I buy another one but a switch and a little hose clamp and um, you know a little bit of soldering and, and she'll be done.